In this final lecture, we will look at some of the risk and legal issues associated with financial account aggregators. As the name implies, these companies allow consumers to aggregate the information from their various financial accounts, including their assets and bank accounts and brokerage accounts, to enable them to better see their financial health and receive advice on alternative ways to save money or manage their finances. Account aggregators allow consumers to access the information either online or on mobile devices, and some of the more well-known firms providing this service include Mint and Hello Wallet. While account aggregators certainly provide a convenient service, they also pose unique risks that consumers should be aware of. The main risk is that consumers could potentially be more exposed to losses due to fraud. If a consumer authorizes an account aggregator to access their financial accounts and grants the aggregator authority to make transfers, the consumer may be liable for fraudulent transfers made. Market participants do not agree about whether consumers using account aggregators will be reimbursed if they experience fraudulent losses in their financial accounts. Some banks have even stated publicly that they may not reimburse losses from consumer accounts if the consumer provided his or her account credentials to an account aggregator and fraudulent activity subsequently occurs in the consumer's account. The relevant regulatory agencies don't see eye to eye on this issue either. In 2017, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau issued non-binding guidance which stated that consumers should have reasonable and practical means to dispute and resolve instances of unauthorized transactions. The Federal Reserve, on the other hand, has suggested that industry stakeholders will need to come to an agreement on which party bears responsibility for unauthorized transactions. Another risk associated with account aggregators is that some firms may hold consumer data without disclosing what rights consumers have to delete the data or prevent the data from being shared with other parties. However, the graham leach bliley Act of 1999 generally requires fintech firms and traditional financial institutions to safeguard non-public personal information about customers. Because of these risks, several large banks have intervened at times to limit the flow of information to some account aggregator websites. This occurred in late 2015 when several big banks, including J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo, expressed concern that the aggregator sites could threaten consumers' account security and that these services overload bank websites at busy times by requesting updated information about consumer accounts from bank servers. While these concerns may be valid, it's important to keep in mind that banks also have a competitive incentive not to share their customers' data with tech-savvy fintech firms who can potentially utilize the data to provide superior products or services. To address some of these issues, several financial institutions have negotiated contractual arrangements with individual account aggregators. For instance, in 2017, JPMorgan Chase and Intuit, which owns Mint.com, TurboTax, and QuickBooks, reached an agreement to allow the bank's customers to check account information on the technology firm's sites without sharing their Chase passwords. To do this, JPMorgan Chase customers authorized the bank to electronically share their financial information with Intuit's financial management sites and the data is shared via an Application Programming Interface, or API. This eliminates the old process, whereby customers had to manually enter their Chase passwords into the sites. As part of the agreement, Intuit agreed not to sell customer data to third parties, which has been a concern of many banks. As more and more consumers continue to enjoy and demand the convenience provided by account aggregators, expect to see similar types of agreements between aggregators and banks to become commonplace.